And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. And today we're talking about Fallout 76. It is definitely fall, it's definitely November because uh, there's a lot of games going on right now. But Fallout 76, for those of you that don't know, is the multiplayer Fallout game. There's been lots of beta and early access and stuff, and we feel like we've finally gotten a good feel for it. And to be straight up, this is my personal opinion, of course, but I'm not the biggest fan of this game as is. Uh, Fallout 76 is definitely going to be divisive. I think you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. You could say the same thing about this video, probably. But 76 is a, a different type of Fallout game. It's Bethesda trying something different, and the potential is there. I just don't know if I'm here for it right now. I, I, I don't really think it's the dumpster fire people are making it out to be but I'm still not crazy about it. And just so you know, this footage is early to be spoiler free and it bounces around between a base Xbox One and a current PC. But getting into it, Fallout 76 actually starts nice and briskly. You start out in Vault 76, uh, but you're out and in the world and playing in a matter of minutes. And in fact, there's very little buildup or pomp and circumstance to it like a traditional game. Uh, it tosses you out into the wilds of West Virginia. And I, I gotta say, man, the environment itself is gorgeous and it feels pretty different for a modern Fallout game. Seeing this wide open, strange new environment made me feel genuinely excited to explore it. And I, I think that's probably the biggest highlight of the game for me. The geography is pretty unique while also managing to have quite a bit of variety to it. Some areas are in worse conditions than others after the war. Some areas are flat. Some areas are hilly or mountainous. Some are dry. Uh, some are dense with vegetation. And there's always stuff hidden around a corner. You know, a weird box to loot, a haunted house to explore, corpses with mysterious letters or hollow tapes attached to them. But that's really all the game gives you. The, the real problem is, it's just not that exciting to play. I, I found myself getting bored. The early hours are rough. It does get more interesting once you try different areas. But ultimately, man, the base quests are just kind of lame for me. The game seems to be designed as a vague framework, uh, leaving it up to you and your friends to find your own fun in this sandbox world. And yeah, you're gonna hear that a lot. The biggest defense for this game is it's absolutely better with friends. And I do think that's a valid defense and a uh, compliment to the game. It's just one that I don't totally jive with. Uh, most quests devolve to just basic combat scenarios or getting to a computer and typing something in or talking to a robot. And that's hugely disappointing and has worse ramifications for the rest of the game. Because when Bethesda announced that there would be no traditional NPCs or non-player characters in the game world like a typical Fallout game, I had some concerns, but I held faith and belief in Bethesda that they were gonna just, you know, have a new idea or something with this. They were trying something different. The idea that it made stumbling upon a real person in the game as a survivor a big deal because the world was so lonely sounded kind of cool, but whether you're with folks or not, this world still manages to feel empty and weird and not in a way where it's trying to evoke it. It's not like creepy in an exciting or mysterious way. It's just not very thrilling at all, at least not to me. Uh, quests are one thing and the adventure is one thing, but events seem to be fairly decent. Uh, they start off small and very boring with you just killing X amount of a basic enemy type, but g give it a few hours, spend some time, you'll be doing weird dungeons and like mad dashes to gather components for something or fighting off a giant enemy. This is definitely the game at its best, hands down. Uh, some teamwork can be required and it can just be good old fashioned video game fun. And it feels satisfying whether you're alone or with pals or randoms in that sense. Some of your enjoyment with this game though is gonna come down to how much you enjoyed certain elements of Fallout 4. Did you like building? Well, there's a lot of that here and even more emphasis on picking up everything you see and breaking it down for components endlessly. I, I like that in Fallout 4 and was totally hooked on it and I quickly became hooked on building stuff again here. Having your own little base camp that you can build up in the world that others can see is pretty creative and cool and I've stumbled upon quite a few other players with their own little creative hideaways already. Now if you weren't into that part of Fallout 4, you might not be here, even though at least here it's almost like you have more of a sense of ownership. Uh, there's also a lot of emphasis on cooking, repairing, and crafting, and modding because weapons degrade really pretty quickly and you're constantly hungry and thirsty. If you're into that stuff, into those mechanics, hey, there's plenty here. Uh, crafting from Fallout 4, but now it's a full-time job. If you're into that, that's awesome. But to me, it leads to lots of rummaging around for trash in kind of a lonely world. And it just all feels just a little bit off. 
That's what I'd say about the whole game. But combat is Fallout combat. Love it or hate it. Uh, when the game can keep up with it, I think the shooting feels pretty competent. The melee attacks feel slightly off though. It's like a distance thing where it's hard to judge sometimes the latency on swinging and it feels kind of whack, no pun intended. Uh, that, however, is a disappointment to some, but I, I don't get the criticism because really it's an online game. How could they slow it down? This is basically the best they could have done. Basically it works as like a timed auto target. You only have access to it if you have AP points and it lets you essentially hard lock onto an enemy and uh, depending on the distance and depending on uh, your level, that's where the percentage will be affected. I don't know, it's weird. It, it does feel partially useless, but sometimes I get it, sometimes it works. Honestly, I'm not convinced on it. I think if they just scrapped it entirely, I think the game would have been fine without it. On the other hand though, the new special system System, the new way you build up and level a character, the card-based system, while it doesn't feel as RPG-ish as the reasons why I love Fallout, uh, building a deck in, in sense of building a character actually was more satisfying than I expected. I went into it thinking I was gonna hate it or thinking it would feel really dumbed down, and while it is more simple, I still got satisfaction out of it. Now the quality of the combat experience really falls upon the performance of the game, which is my one last big issue with this game. I've had a lot of time with it, and with it being my job, I was able to get my hands on it on the PC version, the Xbox One X version, and then the base Xbox One version. And I gotta say, on a base console, at times the frame rate and crashing almost made the game unplayable for me. Uh, it was really disappointing. I know Bethesda games have their glitches and their bugs, uh, but the core performance here affects how fun combat it really is, and when the frame rate gets bad, it feels really craptastic. And when you get into the denser town and city areas, the frame rate, forget about it. The game is brought to its knees. On PC, uh, obviously, it's had some publicized issues lately, uh, but I've been able to get into matches and stuff, and at least the performance and frame rate is more playable. I don't usually harp on this technical stuff unless it actually affects the experience of the game, and I think here for Fallout 76, it does. While it performs somewhat better on an upgraded Xbox One X, the fact that if you're on a base console and you get a noticeably worse and poor performing product, is not cool. The game also looks unfinished, regardless of where you're playing. Uh, low resolution textures, weird depth of field issues, aliasing, and weird quirks with the FOV on PC are the name of the game here, and it ruins what is honestly some incredible art design. Really, uh, the game may be graphically poor, but the art design is awesome. You remember in the start of the video, I mentioned just the, the environmental variety? This West Virginia is designed, uh, lit, and colored extremely well, and goes back into my initial statement where the world still might be worth experiencing. There are some really creative new enemy types, like a sexy Mothman, and some truly like giant, kind of terrifying creatures that you wouldn't expect in a Fallout game, and, and weird locations, stuff I think is worth checking out, but the core framework of the game is just something I'm not a fan of. It still feels kind of early access. I almost wish they would have called this that. Hell, even the cosmetics you can buy feel like they haven't had any thought put into them, except for the Pip-Boy skins, those are pretty cool. But this is a game I still feel has potential. It sounds like I probably dumped on it a lot, uh, but ultimately, I'm gonna be hopping in six months or a year from now just to see how it's grown because I think this can be a good game. I, I just think it needs more time. I'm gonna be avoiding it for now, uh, but I'd love to see where it goes elsewhere. And as much as I did dunk on it, if you're happy playing it, good for you. I I'm happy you got a game you like, but I guess I just wanted something kind of different. Regardless, this is a before you buy and uh, you know how it works. There's some pros, some cons, some personal opinion, and now I definitely wanna hear yours down in the comments. Fallout 76. What do you think, dude? Chances are if you were excited or you played it day one, you've had your hands on it for at least 24 hours by now. Maybe you just played the betas and, and that was it. You haven't jumped into the main game yet. I wanna know your perspective. Am I missing something here? Do you think the game can get better down the line or do you think it's a hopeless cause? Or are you totally in love with it and you don't understand any of the criticisms? Whoever you are, let's talk about this stuff. But if you enjoyed this video, clicking the like button helps us out. We really appreciate that. And it's worth pointing out that you should subscribe if you're new and click that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.